Hey guys, John the Realtor here and welcome to part three of the series on the residential purchase agreement. Um, on this uh, video, we're going to talk about the possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. This is a disclosure and consent, okay? There's a couple things on this form that I find very interesting and we'll cover here in a second. Um, one being that offers are not necessarily confidential and I'll explain that further. Um, I recently... Um, was reminded of this and it's very interesting so we'll go over that so a real estate broker um, whether a cooperation uh, corporation partnership or sole uh, proprietorship may represent more than one buyer or seller this multiple representation can occur through an individual license as a broker or salesperson us or through different individual brokers or salespersons associate licensees acting under uh, the brokerage license so multiple buyers and multiple sellers, very similar, okay? Um, so on the buyer side, broker individually or through the associate licensees may be working with many prospective buyers at the same time. Uh, these prospective buyers may have interest in and make offers on the same properties. Some of these properties may be listed with the broker uh, uh, and some may not. Broker uh, will not limit or restrict any particular buyer from making an offer on any particular property. So guys, if you have multiple buyers, you have a listing, they all like the property, you show four of your buyers, two of them want to make an offer, you know, you're allowed to do that. You just, you know, obviously you have to cover this with your seller. So same thing goes for multiple sellers. Now this one says as a result, the broker will attempt to find buyers for each of those listed properties. Some listed properties may appeal um, to the same prospective buyers, which we just talked about. Some properties may attract more prospective buyers than others. Some of these prospective buyers may be represented by a broker and some may not. So, so always remember, you have multiple clients, let your clients know that. I got multiple buyers, I have multiple sellers. Look, you know, the same people may cross in this, in this pattern. So dual agency is also a part of this, which is represented by brokers. Seller acknowledges that the broker May represent, may represent prospective buyers of seller's property and consents to the broker acting as dual agent for both the seller and the buyer to that transaction. Uh, if the buyer is represented by the broker, the buyer acknowledges that the broker may represent sellers of the property that buyer is interested in and acquiring consents to broker acting as a dual agent for both buyer and seller with regard to that property. Here's the thing, guys. Got to be real careful with dual agency because you want to make sure that you, when you're representing a seller and a buyer, um, you want to make sure that you are um, acting responsibly and have fiduciary responsibility to both parties. Um, and it says here, in the event of dual agency, seller and buyer agree that a dual agent may not, may not, without express permission of the prospective par respective party, disclose to the other party confidential information, including, but not limited to, facts relating to either the buyer's or seller's financial position, motivations, bargaining position. Look, you have a seller and the buyer and you're like, hey, um, the buyer has 400 grand in the bank. Uh, they, could, they, they could definitely afford to offer more. Like you should definitely ask for more, counter. Can't do that. So unless your buyer is like, you know what? I don't care if you tell them that I have the money. That doesn't matter to me. Everything should be in writing, guys, um, through email. Uh, if your brokerage has a consent form, uh, definitely have that printed out. Check with your broker on that. Um, so, and it also says, uh, including the seller's willingness to accept a price less. So, same thing goes with the buyer. You can't go to the buyer and say, "Hey, my seller will accept 50 grand under market." Um, so, let's go ahead and offer that. Can't do that. So, you got to be real careful about what you do here. So, a dual agent is obligated to disclose known facts and material affecting the value. Or desirability to the proper of the property to both parties so you got to be real careful about what you do here so the the section that really interests me is over the years everybody's always said you cannot I cannot disclose this offer but my offers to you I can't tell you what the what the person you know offered on my listing well this section says offer is not necessarily confidential so buyer is advised that the seller or listing agent may disclose the existence terms or condition of the buyer's offer unless all parties and their agent have a signed written confidentiality agreement. Again, go to your brokerage and say, hey, do we have a confidentiality agreement? If not, you go to your seller and you say, hey, um, or you go to your buyer and you say, hey, um, do you mind if I disclose uh, the, you know, um, 
your, our offer or you go to your seller and you say, hey, do you mind if I disclose the offers? Because um, you know someone may ask how much our offers came in at. If the seller says no or vice versa, have your, your client email you because you want to keep everything in writing. Now, again, I'm not an attorney. You're going to hear me say that throughout this series, but keep everything in writing. Um, and, and it says even here, the buyer and seller understand that the broker may represent more than one buyer seller. Again, it repeats it, right? So whether any such information is actually disclosed right here depends on many factors such as current market conditions, the prevailing practice in real estate community, the listing agent's marketing strategy, and the instructions of the seller. Guys, unless there's a, there's a disclosure stating or a written confidentiality agreement, if I call another agent up and I'm like, hey, my, my client wants to make an offer, do you have any offers? And they say yes, what did they offer? Unless there's a confidentiality agreement, you now if the agent says, sorry, I can't relay that information, don't argue with them and say, hey, show me that confidentiality agreement because you don't, you don't think you have the right to do that. But if the agent doesn't have that, they certainly could say, oh, you know what, um, the offer we got in today was 425 Oh, man, okay, great. Well, we'll do our best. And then you can go back to your buyer and do your best. So be real careful with this. If you have more questions about this specifically, Definitely consult with an attorney or call car legal. Um, it is free and they would definitely be able to advise you a little bit better. Again, I'm not an attorney, so um, that's what I would do there. Um, hope this helped, guys. Um, again, if you have any questions specifically, uh, throw them down in the comments. Make sure to like the video uh, so that this spreads and we can help more new agents uh, properly explain and fill out these disclosures, okay? Uh, until the next part, which would be part four, have a great day.